Today we're going to continue our series with Docker and look at how another tool from the Docker toolbox, Docker Machine, can help us to work with various Docker hosts. Our goal for today is to take a look at Docker Machine, uh, which is a tool that we can use to provision Docker hosts, which are servers that are running Docker. And then we also want to look at what the difference is between Docker Machine and what we've currently been using, which is either Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows, depending on what you're running. Before we get started with Docker Machine, you're going to have to install VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a cross-platform application that allows us to run virtual machines. You can create both Windows, Linux, uh, virtual machines in this. So download the, the proper one for your operating system and get this installed, and then we'll be able to, to work with the rest of our tutorial on Docker Machine today. But before we start doing any of that, I want to go through what the difference is between how we're going to create a Docker server today and what currently happens when we use Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows. Docker for Mac utilizes a thing called HyperKit, which uh, Docker themselves have written, which uses a, a core framework that is available in OS X, but it works as a uh, hypervisor, um, which if you remember back to our What is Docker episode, we actually talked about one of the benefits of using Docker is that you didn't need a hypervisor because they're kind of they're kind of expensive. You know, they have to run on top of your operating system and then you fake like and there's another operating system there. Well, on Mac, you can't run Linux because Mac is based off of BSD, which is another Unix variant. So you need HyperKit, which will allow you to spin up a VM. So behind the scenes, Docker for Mac uses HyperKit, spins up a VM that runs Linux, and then we can run our Linux containers there. Similarly, on Windows, you utilize something called Hyper-V, which is Microsoft's solution to doing the exact same thing. All right, back to Docker Machine, though. After you get VirtualBox installed, uh, we can pop back over into our terminal and actually use this thing. You'll notice that I do have Docker Machine running up here, so we have Docker running. And the reason for this is that uh, when you actually run this application, it loads the Docker command line utility, Docker Compose, and Docker Machine all into your... Uh, your path so that you have access to them. So if we run docker machine help, uh, this will actually give us the document documentation for the command that we're going to be using today. So we're going to clear this up. And the first thing that we actually want to do is we want to create a docker machine. So for that, we're going to do docker machine create, and then we need to tell it a driver. This will make more sense in uh, a later episode, but right now we want to say you're going to run VirtualBox. And then we're going to name it, which for our case is just going to be test. So this is going to go off and create a bunch of things. And I already have this boot to Docker thing in my cache. So uh, mine will run significantly faster than what it will run for you uh, if this is the first time that you're downloading this ISO. But it still might be a little bit slow. So I might fast forward through this section. OK, so it finished creating our machine. The first thing uh, that we're going to do is we're actually going to follow its directions here. So it says run Docker machine env test. So Docker machine and test, what does this give us? So if you notice, this actually gives us syntax that is uh, that is valid bash, or you can just run this in your shell right now, um, that's exporting four environment variables. And then down here in a comment, it actually says eval, uh, and then subshell Docker machine env test to configure your shell. So what this actually does is it configures our Docker command line utility to connect to this particular docker machine so if i run docker right now and i say images this will go and connect to our docker for mac um, virtual machine and so let's see what happens when we run docker machine and test and eval this this will reset the docker tls verify host cert path and machine name inside of our uh, current environment and then that will be what we connect to when we run docker so if we run docker images now You'll notice that it gives us uh, nothing here, and that's because images are stored on the Docker host. So if we remember, Docker has what's called a client-server architecture. So our shell is actually the client. And then in both of these cases, our server is a virtual machine that's running somewhere on, uh, you know, in parallel to our, our own machine. But in uh, cases that we'll get to later on, we'll look at using Docker for deployment. They'll actually be running in the cloud somewhere. So it'll be running on some server provider but we'll still be able to access it using the Docker command line utility from our machine. 
All right. Well, we are connected to our new Docker machine, but uh, we already know how to use Docker and, and, to, and how to interact with the Docker server. The real, the meat of what we're trying to get to here today is how to work with Docker machine itself. And there are quite a few things you can do with Docker machine. So if you just you look at what it uh, prints out here, there are quite a few commands, but you don't need to know all of these. And a lot of them are, are, are kind of standard. Um, but what we're actually going to use right now is we just really care about like starting, stopping, looking at the current machines that we have and uh, going from there. So to look at them, you can use Docker machine LS, which is the same way you would list out your file system. And this will give you the name, uh, whether or not it's active, the driver, its state, the URL, which you could actually access from your browser. Um, and if you have more than one like virtual box, uh, Docker machine running, it'll it'll properly iterate this uh, this IP address for you, and then it also tells you uh, what version of Docker and if it's a Docker Swarm uh, or if it had errors. So this is pretty useful, and it's it's neat once you have multiple Docker machines that you're talking to because then these machines can be you know virtually anywhere as long as you have access to them over the internet or your local network for that matter, and you can switch in between which machine you're talking to using Docker machine itself. So that's pretty awesome. And right now you can see that our test machine is, is currently running. And Docker machine allows us to interact with each of these machines by using Docker machine, the command name. Uh, so we'll use stop in this case, and then you pass it the name of the machine. That was pretty simple. It stopped the machine. If we look at Docker machine LS now, you'll see that it's it's no longer set to active and its current state is stopped. Uh, the URL goes away on this particular one because the IP address is calculated when you spin up the virtual machine. VirtualBox, in this case, will we'll figure out what IP address it can use. And it has a certain pool of IP addresses because you can have multiple virtual machines running. If we were running this on uh, a server somewhere, we could still start and stop it, but it's the server it's connected to would still exist, and uh, the IP address would, would be maintained because it would be something that we have access to all the time. So we're gonna um, we're gonna spin this back up for a second, and you do that using Docker machine start and then name of the machine. This does a similar thing that it did when we first. Um, first created it. All right, so it's back up and running. So if we Docker Machine LS, uh, we can see that once again, it's set to active, it's running, and it has its uh, URL again. Uh, looking again at Docker Machine's commands, you, you can see these, uh, the various things here. So like Docker Machine, this is a useful one, IP of test will give us just the IP address. So this is the host you would access in your browser. You'd put this there, and then say you had something that was uh, running on port 80 and mapped to port 80, you could go straight to it. Or if you were running a Rails application on port 3000 and you had that that port mapped to 3000 on this, you would go to this uh, IP address, colon 3000, and then you could connect to your Rails app even though it's running inside this virtual machine. One of the other ones in here that's pretty nice is upgrade. And this actually lets you upgrade the uh, version of Docker that is running on the server just with a single command line. And it'll stop the, the server, it'll upgrade the, the uh, actual Docker uh, server code, and then it'll start it back up. Right now though, we're going to remove the machine that we just created. And we're removing this right now because we don't want to waste the utilities that are on your machine. Docker for Mac or Docker for Windows already gives you a virtual machine. So you don't really need this one right now. I wanted to explain how Docker Machine works because the next tutorial that I'm going to be doing with Docker uh, is going to utilize Docker Machine and some other things in order to deploy. But we don't want to waste like hard drive space on your computer uh, or we don't want to accidentally have this, um, this virtual machine running and wasting your CPU and RAM. So for that, uh, as you might expect, it's Docker Machine RM and then the name of the machine. You have to verify this one because they don't want you... Uh, sometimes you can have some important things on a Docker machine. You might not want to delete it right away. So we're going to say yes. Go to that. And then if we Docker machine ls, you'll see that there's nothing here. 
So this has been a pretty short tutorial, but I wanted to go through and make sure that we have a really good grasp on how Docker servers work and um, a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes with Docker for Mac and how we could mimic something similar using using other tools, which is what VirtualBox uh, gives us here. And there, there are also some like performance differences between Docker for Mac and doing Docker machine with VirtualBox that you might run into in development. But um, I really wanted us to have a grasp on Docker servers so that when we use Docker Machine to provision a server out in the wild, and then we can use uh, Docker Compose to deploy some code to it, we know exactly what's going on all the way down the stack. We already learned how to use Docker Compose to, to manipulate and orchestrate applications, and now we understand how Docker Machine works to create servers for us. So we have all the building blocks it takes for us to take our first step into deploying using Docker. In the next tutorial, we're going to use Docker Machine to create a server in DigitalOcean, and then we're going to use Docker Compose to deploy a Ruby on Rails application with a database. Uh, that way we can access that from uh, a public URL. So I hope you like this video, and uh, I want to know your thoughts and what you're doing with Docker. If you've learned anything from these videos and are putting it into practice, it'd be really cool for me to hear. If you would be so kind to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and also go over to coderjourney.com and subscribe to the mailing list. Um, I'm going to be putting out some articles that aren't necessarily video related and that you might want to check out there. So thanks and enjoy using Docker.